everyone, I'm Ranger Christina here at Zion National Park. Today we're standing behind the Human History Museum and in the distance behind me are the cliffs of the Temples and Towers, which are beautiful tan pink sandstone cliffs. You see lots of different desert plants in the area just behind me and today we're going to be talking about some of the animals that call this park home. Specifically, are lizards and how they avoid being eaten by many of the other animals in the park. Come learn about egg laying scaly skin for leg reptilians. We're talking about lizards. Lizards have lots of predators here. Coyotes can eat a lizard, a road runner, any sort of snake, maybe even another lizard. So there are lots of things to be worried about if you suddenly turn into a lizard in Zion, but I'll teach you some tips and tricks to avoid being eaten. The first lizard that we'll talk about today is our one of our biggest lizards. It's called the Chuckwalla. A Chuckwalla, just like our painting shows, is a dark gray lizard with foldy skin covered in scales, and their bodies can be up to 16 inches long. They are one of 16 different species of lizards that we have in Zion, but they are some of the biggest lizards that we have. They don't start out very big. They grow 17 millimeters every year. That's about a half inch until they are 25 years old. That's when they reach their full adult size. So in order to avoid being eaten, if you can make it to adulthood as a chuckwalla, you're going to be bigger than most of the things that are going to try to eat you. If you're a younger chuckwalla, you may have to use your home for defense. Because of our chuckwalla's dark gray coloring, they like to live around volcanic rocks so that they can use camouflage to avoid being seen. If that doesn't work, then they will scurry between the rocks and find some nooks and crannies to hide in. With their expandable skin around their bodies, that's what all those extra wrinkles are for, they take one big gulp of air and wedge themselves into those cracks between the rocks. That way, if a bobcat were trying to reach at it with its paw or a roadrunner were trying to grab at it with its beak, our lizard would be stuck in that crack. People have actually eaten chuckwalla, and the way that we're able to do that is not by reaching into the cracks in the rock to grab them, because it's still hard for us, but we use tools in order to uh, extract them from the rocks. So if you take a stick and poke the lizard from behind, you're able to deflate it and pull it out of the crack. Here in the park, our chuckwalla are protected, and they are not going to be lunch for any of us or uh, if they can avoid it, any of the other animals that might want to eat them. Our next lizard, as we move down in size, is one of the more common lizards that we have in Zion. It's called the desert spiny lizard. A desert spiny lizard is a stout lizard that's about 12 inches long at adulthood. In this painting, you can see that it's covered in thick keeled scales, so it's got a nice suit of armor and its coloration is generally tan on the top with some yellowish sides and darker on its belly. They have dark scales that form a collar on the underside of its neck, which makes it easy to identify. These lizards avoid being eaten by being more aggressive than anything that might want to eat it. So even if you approach a desert spiny lizard, it might start doing push-ups at you, it might try to chase you, and if you don't leave it alone, it might even try to bite you. So we are going to stay away from our desert spiny lizards and any of our other wildlife here in the park because they have to spend a lot of energy just to survive anyway. Our desert spiny lizards are known for being especially bold and feisty and have a strong bite, but if that doesn't work out for them, then they will run away and hide, much like our chuckwalla. Right. The next lizard that we'll talk about is one of my personal favorites. We're moving down in size to our Western Whiptail. As you can see, the Western Whiptail is a very different shape from the other two lizards that we've met before. It's a long, slender lizard that's body is about five inches long, but its tail can be double the length of its body. So it has a long, slender tail. Our Western Whiptail is covered in a mottled pattern so the bottom layer is, tends to be a little bit lighter, and then we've got a dappled brown, almost purple coloration on its back. 
Our young Western whiptails will even have a bright blue tip on the end of their tail, which makes them a little bit easier to identify. Based on the shape, you can probably guess that our Western whiptails are not going to be the bold, feisty lizards that attack anything. They're not going to be hiding in nooks and crannies on the rocks, but instead they're going to rely on their speed with that long, slender shape. They tend to live in the grasses and brush down on the ground, so when they're not hiding or searching for insects, they can run away from predators at over 10 miles an hour. That's about as fast as you and I can run when we're sprinting. If you're Usain Bolt, it might be a little bit slower than you. But our Western Whiptails can run away from most of the predators that might be trying to get them. Our next lizard that we'll talk about is one of the coolest lizards that you'll find in the park. They tend to live either in the lower elevations or a different species up on the higher plateau, but down here in the canyon, we've got the greater short horned lizard. You may have heard of these called a horny toad, except they're not covered in horns and they're not toads. So that's not a great descriptive name for this lizard. They tend to be pretty small. Their body is about five inches total with their tail being one inch of that. So they're petite lizards that are covered in scales that look like spines. Their coloration is really dappled. So you've got dark colors, you've got light colors, all in a sort of tan to brown category. So they blend in really well with the rocks around here. They tend to be pinkish or tan. Our greater shorthorn lizards, much like our chuckwalla, rely on taking a big breath of air in order to seem a lot more intimidating than they are. So they turn into a land pufferfish when they take a big gulp of air and look generally unappealing. If a predator is not deterred by that, then they have the unique ability to squirt blood out of their eyes. They can shoot blood three feet from their eyeballs at any predators. And apparently it tastes especially bad if you are a coyote or a fox or even your domestic dog. The last lizard that we'll meet today is one of the most common lizards that we have all over Zion National Park, and it's called the Plateau Lizard. Our plateau lizards are usually lighter tan in color when they live down here, but if they live in other areas with darker rocks, you may see them with a darker brown coloration. It's a small lizard that's generally about three and a half inches long in body length with a medium sized tail. And in our painting here, you can see that they've got a blunt nose and kind of a dappled tan color on their back with really, really long toes. Our plateau lizards are known for being very well adapted to most of the ecosystems in the park. So if they're trying to avoid predators, they can just go somewhere else where the predator isn't. They can live on the ground, they can live on trees, they can climb buildings. They have a lot of ways to be able to get away from anything that might want to make them their lunch. Our plateau lizards, much like some of our other, other lizards in the park, like our Western whiptail, can also drop their tails. So if they feel threatened, they can cut off blood flow to their tail and leave it behind. The tail continues to flop around and be a distraction or a snack to any predator who might want to eat it. And the rest of the lizard can run away with all its important organs while it recuperates and regrows its tail over a couple of months if it's able to stay safe and get enough food. So our plateau lizard is well adapted for this environment. You will see these all over the park if you get a chance to visit Zion. So the main things to remember today are that lizards are an extremely important part of our ecosystem. And if you meet one, maybe you can take a page from a lizard's book and do some push-ups, bask in the sunlight. But remember, we don't eat lizards for lunch.